There's something inspiring about a fenceless landscape. As you can see in this country, trying to fence this is, is difficult. When you look at fencing technology, it's 100 years old. How can you apply technology to solve fencing issues? We want quality of life for ourselves and our livestock. We want, you know, a wonderful community to live in. We want the, these soils and water systems to work properly. We're just a little piece of a big complex web of life. We just try and manage the pieces that we can manage. I was in a conversation with a friend of mine and she says, wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to have fences? And I said, yes, but you and I'll never see it. And it wasn't two years later, I was at a meeting and this lady says, oh yeah, we got friends in Canada using these electronic collars to manage cows instead of fences. And one of our contacts in the wildlife community started searching the internet and he found the company we currently work with, Vents Company. And we contacted them, told them about our needs in this area with the wildlife migrations and our working relationship with the conservation communities. They said, yeah, we'll work with you. The way the technology works is every caller has a GPS receiver in it. Every caller knows where it is in the world. Second piece of the puzzle is the callers have virtual fence lines programmed into them or a virtual paddock. And the third piece of the puzzle is the pressure that the caller can generate on the animal. And we use a combination of sound and electronic stimulus to apply pressure to the animal to stay within the virtual paddocks. They worked well. We get 95% compliance or better from the cows. Another part of the technology is a communication system which allows you to remotely program and update the collars. The investment for that is to install a number of towers on the property. All of that information goes up to the internet cloud. All of the data from Leo's collars, he browses it from his tablet or his computer. Early in the spring when the cattle start going out, we try and stay two pastures ahead with our movements and uh, we're moving cattle a lot more often. We're moving cattle every five to 15 days. We use the vents technology to subdivide the larger pastures so that we can manage the grazing better. There's areas that don't get grazed, there are areas that get grazed too long. So we're trying to address all those issues at once. A lot of what Leo is doing now, he could use temporary electric fence for, but that's a lot of work. So by using virtual fencing instead, he's able to do those cattle moves without going out and putting in fences. So if you think about how grasslands were grazed historically, they were um, always really packed together and they were always all in the same place, but then they would move on quickly. And our modern day range management with, with cattle and other livestock has not really looked like that. So as we learn even more about how these grasslands were historically grazed, we can use virtual fences to try and mimic that. Watching the cows with the collars on them has been an interesting study in animal behavior because I did notice a change in their behavior. They have historical memories of where they grazed in the month of November or the month of December and we challenged all of that. We made them go to places they had never grazed before. In our landscape, it's important to have a four month supply of hay sitting in the corner. But our long term goal is to graze our cattle out on improved forages for 11 to 12 months a year. The relationship between the price of value of livestock and the cost of equipment is changed dramatically in our long term health. We cannot put up hay. We cannot afford the equipment. So we have to change our business model if we're going to sustain the ranch. Virtual fencing is going to be a game changer in terms of cost and labor and we bring things to the table with respect to improving fencing but then you're able to do more fencing. 
and more flexible fencing. Stock density is able to go up, ranching efficiency can go up, and all of this is going to improve uh, the bottom line. You know, we are more prepared to weather adverse situation or the coming changes because we have the tools and the opportunities and the options to change course rather quickly. We have so many more opportunities than I had when I was growing up that I just hope the young people recognize what they can do out here. I went and made a presentation to a small group in an agriculture community and I generated the most interest from the young people in the room. You know, they're used to the cell phone industry and it excites them. It was so, so wonderful to see their interest and that's one of the hopes of the caller is that it'll engage the next generation. I would say every rancher, anybody in this county and this community, they love the land, they love their animals, they take care of their animals. You younger people will live to see it. And I guess it's up to you. What do you want this land to look like? I just think about what it could look like in, in 20 or 50 years if virtual fencing takes off, that we could have a completely fenceless open range again, but yet with carefully controlled grazing. A lot of what good ranching and good stockmanship is, is about taking care of the land. And we bring another tool to the table to let ranchers do that well. I'm just glad to have to live in the community I do and the landscape I do and work with the people I do, you know, because it's a wonderful place to be.